already won your Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a quick review of this novel which I just finished the other day. It's called The Lost Garden by Helen Humphreys, a 2002 novel out of Canada. Helen Humphreys is, a, I guess, technically a British-Canadian writer in that she was born in the UK but grew up in Canada since she was a toddler. This novel is set in England, 1941, during the London Blitz and the main character Gwen Davis is a 35-year-old spinster, as they called them in those days. She has been working at the Royal Horticultural Society, studying some rare parsnip disease. I want to say parsnip, but something very uh, specialized. And she is at her wit's end, living through the Blitz. She loves London so much, and she can't bear to live through more of its destruction so she this th as the novel opens she's in a taxi on her way to the station to accept a job outside of london but here as she's recalling the nighttime bombing i know how to judge the relative distance of an exploding bomb those far enough away not to inflict any personal damage make a dull crumpled sound like that from a collision between an automobile and a lamp post the bombs the germans drop that are close enough to kill emit a strangled whistle, not unlike that of a huge, maniacal tea kettle. So Gwen Davis is on her way to Devon, where she has accepted a position t supervising the gardening and harvesting of potatoes on an abandoned estate. I think the family gave up their estate to the government for the war effort, so not so much abandoned as uh, kind of volunteered. She is a deeply lonely woman, having never had a romance and uh, living a pretty isolated life. So I could probably stop this review here and say, if you've ever been lonely for an extended period of time, or if you're a solitary person in general, and if you like poetic fiction, this book is for you. I could stop there, but of course I won't. I'll go on for a few more minutes, but hopefully not too many. Gwen is a spiritual gardener and a deep reader and she worships Virginia Woolf's writing and as she's on the train out to Devon she's I think she's looking over another passenger's sh shoulder and sees the headline that Virginia Woolf has gone missing and is presumed drowned and that brings back memories of how important a writer Virginia Woolf has always been to her and her one experience seven years prior when she was convinced she saw Virginia Woolf walking through Tavistock Square alone. That is all resounding through the novel as Gwen arrives at this estate and is surprised that there is a house full of billeted Canadian soldiers on the estate. She wasn't expecting that. She also wasn't expecting that the land girls, you know, the women's land army, that the uh, women, the young women, have already arrived. Gwen is not the most likable character in the world, which is typically the kind of protagonist that I love. I like to be made to work hard to fall in love with my fictional characters, and Gwen Davis is that kind of character, to be sure. And so she arrives, and she's not used to really working closely with people, and she's really socially awkward, and would much prefer to have her head stuck in a book. And it's the relationship she makes with these young women, many of whom are your stereotypical young women when there's a house full of Canadian soldiers. Because, you know, Canadian guys are really hot, right? It's always been true. <laughs> but all your wartime drama stereotypes, right? So there's all this, been all this sexual fraternizing going on before she arrived, and she feels like she needs to clamp down on it. And there's all this stuff. And she herself is so deeply lonely. And her mother, with whom she had a very difficult relationship, had just recently died, like just a few months before, I believe. And her mother had never really loved her. And that's beautifully described, I thought. But the one gesture that her mother ever made that touched Gwen was she gave her a, an edition of the antiquarian books, the Genus Rosa, a massive two-volume set of horticultural wisdom about roses. 
and that's one of the few things that Gwen uh, brought to Devon. These books are so huge that she actually lies down on the floor or in her bed and puts the books on top of her just to simulate the having the weight of a lover on her. So if you think that's a bit of a far-fetched image, there is, there's the, the thing about this book. There are parts of this book that are really flirting with that line between poeticized sentimentality and beautiful fictional images and scenes. Throughout this novel, Helen Humphreys, who started her writing career as a poet, and this, I believe, was her third novel, writes very close to that line where beautiful poetic writing can veer into poetic mush. And there were maybe four or five times during the 200 pages of this novel where I thought, oh, she's losing me, she's losing me, and that feeling only stayed with me for a half a page, and then I was right back in it. The writing is so beautiful, and the emotions are described with such uh, powerful images. And so there's the image of the garden. Well, the one central aspect of Gwen's experience on the estate is that she discovers a lost garden that had been tended presumably by governors who had been on the estate uh, in the early days of World War One and perished in the war. She stumbles upon it, and then she begins to tend to it and plant her own, literally and figuratively, plant her own dreams and yearnings in the garden, and it all blends together. And so there's, a, there's an image which some readers I know who absolutely loved this novel, as did I, thought was just a little bit too heavy-handed, and that is the image of the garden as this metaphor for writing and reading, self-expression, expressing love, receiving love. I thought it was beautiful and maybe just as much too much. But this was a five-star read for me. And there's humor because Gwen is laughably obtuse about day-to-day -day things. And there is a love interest that develops for her up on the hill in the house full of billeted Canadians because who can resist Canadians, right? But that isn't the overarching focus of the book, thank God. And it certainly doesn't have anything remotely resembling a conventional romance novel's ending. What kept me on course with it when I thought that the romantic stuff might be inducing a cringe or two in me was the visceral feelings I had of Gwen's loneliness. I am not single now, but I was for years and years and years, and I related so much to the depth of Gwen's yearnings. So that when she felt like she might have stumbled upon a chance for love, if those yearnings suddenly took a very sweet, overly sweet, perhaps misguided turn, and I had to endure a few sentences of that saccharine whatever, I thought, well, I would feel the same. And it's only a couple sentences. But all told, stepping back from it, it was beautiful. It did actually make me appreciate gardening. I've said in some of my videos before that the physical setting is not something that I tend to focus on or uh, my eyes kind of glaze over well this book the, the setting is so important and the writing is so beautiful that I was actually googling the flower names and and looking at the pictures as I was reading and thinking wow there's so much to this that's rich and, and resonant so I will end by re reiterating what I said if you have known loneliness and or you are a solitary person or have been and you appreciate uh, good poetic writing. This might be a book for you. It's certainly one that I loved. In closing, I read a quote about Gwen and the books, the Genus Rosa, in a maybe a Friday Reads recently. I'm going to paste those in at the end. If you've already seen that clip, 
you can stop now because I'm just going to end with that quote because it gives you a real sample of the writing style and it's a, I think a beautiful passage. I'll add that now. Here it is. Of all my books that I have dragged down to Devon from London, the grandest is the genus Rosa. Miss Wilmot's Encyclopedia of Roses is in two volumes, each huge and heavy, weighted down with her botanical earnestness. I haul them from my luggage, lie on the floor, and pull one volume onto my chest, one onto my stomach. I did this in London when the German bombing became more frenzied this past winter. Actually, I started the ritual of comfort a few months before that, when my mother was dying in hospital. I lie under the genus rosa on the floor of this, my temporary home. I can see all the dust under the bed next to me. The room still smells strongly of fire. The books press down on me. Surely no one could weigh as much as the genus rosa. But this is what I imagine. Someone. This is what I think about. Love. And that's all for now. Thanks for stopping by.